I finished Resident Evil Village recently, and this game has got some big characters in it. Big names, big personalities, and, uh, uh, big obvious. But early on in the hype cycle for Resident Evil, we really don't want to call it 8, but we still kind of have to call it 8, there was one big character in particular who caught my eye, and I wasn't alone. Plenty of people on Twitter and elsewhere noticed not only a heavy inspiration being taken from an older RE title, but also, uh, other aspects. And it got me thinking, because the Duke, as this character is called, is a stereotype of a population that I am a part of, and always have been. Though my weight has been on a steady decline over the past six years or so, I am still an obese individual, try as I might, and looking at the way the Duke is coded, while simultaneously being a fan of this franchise that has always played into stereotypes regarding American culture and corporatism, got me thinking about how people like me are coded elsewhere. But before then, I should probably clarify what coding means in the first place. You've probably heard the term coding in literary and or political contexts before, in terms of, say, racial coding. But it applies to much more than that, and it is not a positive or a negative term. It's just a term that describes a literary phenomenon. When people refer to coding in a literary context, they usually mean a form of conscious or subconscious meaning built into a text by way of commonly understood archetypes, descriptors, or cultural expectations. Those expectations can be rooted in anything from genre tropes to any number of stereotypes ranging from body shape to religion to the LGBTQIA umbrella to... Yeah, racism. Like, as a broad non-racial example, if a character has horns and sharp claws and fire sprouts wherever they are, that's code for Satan and therefore usually not good in the context of the story. Usually. That's coding. That's it. That's what it is. It just so happens that some of those expectations are... iffy. Okay, actually, let's do a better, more positive example, because there are positive examples out there. Join me for a little exercise. It'll be fun, I promise. I want you to close your eyes and picture a witch for me. What traits does this witch have in your mind? I'll give you a few quiet seconds to think about it. Okay, time's up. You can open your eyes now. If you were to write a story with a witch as a minor or major character in it, then it would probably look a fair bit like the witch you just pictured. And chances are, a lot of the traits that you thought up of come from long-standing cultural expectations of what a witch is like. There's a very good chance that your mental witch is probably feminine, familiar with magic and or alchemy, somewhat satanic or demonic in nature, might be mean, might be nice, might be deceptively nice, could be old and haggish or could otherwise be really young and seductive. If that's true, you can thank pop cultural portrayals of witches that have influenced each other for generations. Old Christian folk tales about witches, influenced art featuring witches, influenced a long complex tree of witch portrayals in pop culture, ranging from The Wizard of Oz to Bewitched to Banjo-Kazooie to WandaVision. Spoilers. And you've probably noticed that many of these archetypes are kinda misogynistic in nature. That's the point. Witches have historically represented a corruption of Christian feminine ideals, and that can still influence how a modern fictional witch is written, whether or not that is explicitly what the writer intends when they are writing their stories. That's just how witches have been historically. But you know what witch plays into all those archetypes while still being a badass? Bayonetta flips a lot of those expectations on their heads. Bayonetta is very feminine, familiar with alchemy, extremely demonic in nature, and really seductive. But she also acts independently and in her own self-interest without coming off as villainous or evil. It turns out that she's just an extremely talented and irreverent fighter who's trying to find her place in the world. Which, I mean, considering who Bayonetta is a spiritual successor to. This party's getting crazy. Let's rock. Bayo leans into many, many tropes about witchcraft, and doesn't shy away from the traumatic history behind a lot of those tropes if you're willing to read all the lore, by the by. But she is a stronger character for it. 
The witchcraft angle gives her a defiant edge that fits the badass absurd Devil May Cry-esque tone that the game is going for. Not all coding has to be iffy. Sometimes cultural expectations can enhance a piece of media and make it more interesting, or more fun, or more potent. And also, sometimes those coded expectations can make a piece of media more uncomfortable. And that brings us straight into Resident Evil Village and The Duke. <laughs> I am but a humble merchant. Quick disclaimer, I'm not going to spoil Resident Evil Village in any major way, and though I'm going to say some pretty negative things, I do overall think that it is a great video game that is worth playing. Like many other examples of coding, the case may be that the Duke's designers did not put enough conscious care into the character's design, and though I found his design to be emotionally exhausting, it was ultimately not enough to ruin the entire experience for me. It could be that I like the game and its developers a lot, and that the Duke is ultimately a fairly small part of the the whole adventure, and it could also be that decades of obesity stigmatization in popular media has just kind of left me numb to it. I don't know. But anyway, moving on. The Duke is not the first merchant character to appear in this series. I am far from the first person to point out that Resident Evil Village takes a lot of cues from Resident Evil 4, from setting the game in a rural European village, to a heightened focus on action compared to the previous game, to having the player travel to an ominous castle, to a giant fish boss, to moments where you have to bar yourself in a room and shoot monsters from within, to, of course, having a merchant character. What are you buying? What are you buying? <laughs> Just something an old friend of mine used to say. Resident Evil 4's merchant plays into a lot of stereotypes regarding shady salesman types, from opening a trench coat, to inexplicably having a bunch of firearms for sale, to that iconic shifty voice acting. Got a selection of good things on sale, stranger. The trope of a shady guy selling things from a trench coat has been around for decades, having been parodied on TV and film for a long time. You wanna buy a sundial? And Resident Evil 4's Merchant plays straight into that trope in a cheesy way that's fairly conducive to the game's campy tone. The Duke is different. He is introduced literally bursting out of his carriage. He has various meats and sausages lined up next to him. He speaks in this faux British accent. He's a connoisseur of high-class dishes. And yeah, we shouldn't beat around the bush. He's obese. He's very obese. And sitting down to play this game, turning the corner to Dimitrescu's castle, and running into this guy for the first time made me very, very tired. Fat characters have frequently been portrayed in pop entertainment as oafish, rich, and pompous, if not clumsy and sleazy. There are exceptions, as there are for every trope, but generally, if I asked you to take part in that thought exercise again, but with a fat character instead of a witch, chances are fairly good that you would come up with a character like our Duke here. As briefly mentioned before, I am what Alaska Airlines charitably calls a customer of size. I've been obese for most of my life and faced tons of stigma for it. In addition to portrayals in pop media, there have always been sensationalized headlines throughout my childhood and my life claiming that people who look like me are inherently unhealthy, and pop entertainment usually likes to portray obese characters as unsexy or undesirable, especially men. Like, I can't go on social media and talk about my size without some old family friend coming out of the woodwork in my comments or DMs to tell me that they're concerned with how I look. And like, you think I haven't noticed? You think I've looked at all the negative, stigmatizing appearances that obese people have made both in fiction and elsewhere on television and movies and thought, hmm, I'm fine the way I am. I've made many dietary and lifestyle changes in response to that kind of stimulus, and though I have lost plenty of weight, I don't think there's much I can healthily do to become not obese, either instantly or gradually. Like, this is what I look like. This is my body shape. I like to think that I'm not as unhealthy or unsexy as our entertainment makes obese people out to be, and I also like to think that real obese people out there aren't either. And yet, here we are with Resident Evil Village featuring the Duke from the Resident Evil Village series with his coded obese attributes like his riches, his meats, and his pompous attitude. 
at least he winds up being a helpful ally in the long run instead of an aristocratic monster like I was worried he'd be in the marketing leading up to the game's release. And like many portrayals of obesity in pop culture, I'm not entirely sure this was a conscious decision because again, these kinds of tropes are drilled into our heads over and over and over again. Sometimes a stereotype exists because many different stories have buried them deep into our subconscious. That's how coding works. But I do think that with greater care, that kind of negative coding can be mitigated, because I don't think that the Duke needed to be this way. Like Resident Evil 4's merchant wasn't this way, and he was fine. He's great. <laughs> Thank you. It's never easy to break away from those kinds of cultural expectations, but if you're a creator, you need to think about what you are implying when you design a character a certain way. Every creator has internal biases, and that can't be avoided. I just wish for more care to be taken with character designs, and for more positive representation for people like me.